is anti-Semitic, is, uh, is uh, calling for the destruction of the, the practical destruction of the state of Israel. Are you, are you an anti-Semite? I mean, ask the difficult questions. Why are you supporting an anti-Semite? They need to feel the pushback. There has to be, I, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but there has to be a cost to anti-Semitism. And, if, and, and uh, I, I think that that's what we all can do in situations like that. Make the phone call, ask, are you uh, actually uh, considering canceling your concert uh, because of pressure of anti-Semites? Very, very important thing, because if they can get some pushback, hopefully they'll, that'll help them make the right decision. Yes. Let's talk about, let's talk about the premise of, of the BDS, what they call occupation. I want you guys to ask any Arab in the world, any Muslim in the world, when did, when did the occupation start? 1967? I doubt if you find even one in the world. All of them will say at least 1948. Some of them, I was a lecturer in the University on Mount Scopus. Some of them said that the occupation started, listen, 1882, in the first Aliyah, when the first Jews came from Zionist purpose, occupation started. No one in the world uh, 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 heard about the Palestinian people, but occupation started. So <clears throat> this, is, this is a question that we have to ask. If the person says it's 1948, there is no, we are not dealing with you. If you're talking about 1967, let's talk. But we, no one in the world, in the Arab world, say 1967. Great. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the Prime Minister was at the United Nations General Assembly. And I saw him, uh, I saw pictures of him meeting a man called General uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who's the president of the Arab Republic of Egypt. Uh, and you said that all Muslims and Arabs in the world believe that Israel's occupation began in 1948, so Israel shouldn't exist. So how come the Prime Minister meets such an enemy of Israel and the Jewish people who seeks our destruction? What you can't say that President Assisi doesn't represent millions of Arabs and Muslims who believe that Israel shouldn't exist. President, how come the Prime Minister President, doesn't boycott him? This is, this is the main fault in the left in all the world. There is a big distinction and a difference between a, a, a state a existing. A, a no, but you were talking about all the Arabs and Muslims in the world. That, that can you? last, wait, wait, wait. Egypt has 5,000 years of history. So when we deal with such a great nation, we can count at least about our contracts. But when we are talking about a, a gangs in, in Ramallah or other that control in, 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 a, in a criminal way their people, as you see in Gaza, as you see in, in, in other places here in, in, in Judea and Samaria, so this is a, a, a big difference. So you say why a prime minister is talking with Assisi? Assisi represent a state. We wanted to talk with the Palestinians, but none of them speaks about the 1967, 1967 we'll occupation. The last question, so you want to respond? No, I, ju I just said that you said that all Arabs and Muslims believe that Israel shouldn't exist and therefore there's no point in talking to them. I didn't say what it. I'm saying, no, I didn't I'm say it. I said, when did you occupation said all Arabs start? Muslim. When did occupation start? Bring me even one Muslim that said that it was 1967. So let me go back to our topic. And I want to ask you, Last question, you know, Israel invests so much time, efforts, and money, a lot of money, in fighting BDS movement. Is there a way to win? I th yeah, uh, I, I think uh, absolutely. In fact, I think the BDS is a, is a losing battle. Uh, again, it's not dangerous economically, it's dangerous morally. I don't think, by the way, regarding your first question, that the best way to fight BDS is to boycott the boycotters. I think sometimes uh, that has, is, is, can, can be a boomerang and have a boomerang effect. How, um, the best way to, to beat BDS is to create more business relationships, more sport relationships, more cultural re relationships around the world. And at the end of the day, why did the President of the United States decide to 
uh, moved the embassy to Jerusalem. And I bring this up specifically because the reason that the embassies moved to Tel Aviv in the 1980s was because of an Arab boycott. It was an economic boycott and, and an oil embargo. It was always in Tel Aviv. But, well, 13 of them were in Jerusalem and, and they moved to Tel Aviv at that time because of, of an of uh, Arab, uh, of a oil embargo. Today, I believe that Israeli technology and Israeli intelligence, which is preventing terrorist attacks around the world, including the United States, and probably every country, every single person that's sitting in this room, is more important than Arab oil. And for that reason, I think more countries will follow the United States, moving the embassy to the capital that we decided was our capital 70 years ago. At the end of the day, we will win the battle. Um, and, but it'll, it'll, it'll happen by creating more diplomatic relationships, more sports relationships, more cultural relationships, and more business. Uh, and, and, and I know that, that uh, a lot of people here are, are focused on that, uh, but we will win, and, uh, and uh, it's, they're, they're fighting a losing battle. However, it's still dangerous because it's dangerous morally. Danny. I didn't uh, introduce... I didn't mention, uh, I think, one of the best Zionists I ever saw in my life, and I'm almost six years old. It's uh, Sylvan Adams that brought the Giro d'Italia here, and he, he, he donated 22 million euros to bring this competition to Israel together with the government. He put such a large amount of money on one, on one sport event. The only thing that we need, more Sylvan Adams in Israel to bring international sport and cultural events that are strong. And this is why Eurovision is strong, because the EBU is strong, because the Giro d'Italia is strong, because FIBA is strong. And so there is a way just to bid and to bring, and this is what, at least with my small skills, I will keep on going, even Messi will cancel his visit in Israel. We hope not. Hey. We surely hope not. This is not, this is only Messi, again. my God. <laughs> I want to say that what behind all these organizations that fight against Israel is that eventually they oppose the return of the Jews to Zion. There is one law in the 250 years history, the last history, one law that exists, the return of the Jewish people to its homeland. These people are against these very returning. But is it worth fighting I just, against I just, them? Wait, I just, just today on, on lunch, I read with my little six years old daughter, uh, the first chapter of our portion in the Torah, chapter 12 in Genesis, where God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And we know, we know that in history, the people that were, that, that wanted to stand against the return of the Jews to Zion, they failed. At the end, after 2,000 years, we came back here and we are thriving, thanks God. <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the optimist note of uh, <laughs> my colleagues here. And please know. do. We're amongst uh, journalists. They they're used to it. Look, I I I, th I, th I think that the threat the threat. Look, I, I grew up in an Israel that was under the Arab boycott uh, economically. Most uh, multinational companies that existed back then wouldn't operate in Israel. For example, we had Coca Cola because they had uh, very strong uh, uh, Jewish stockholders. Uh, but uh, Pepsi wouldn't sell in Israel. You could buy Pepsi in Ramallah, you could buy Pepsi in Gaza. We could watch Pepsi commercials on Jordanian television, but not in Israel. Uh, Japanese cars, we only had Subarus. Uh, Toyota only came here uh, 1991 when the peace process began. Uh, and, and the list goes on and on. And, and by the way, this is the reason why one of the, one of the failures of any boycott of Israel is that there, is n there are hardly any Israeli commercial products that are identified as such in the same way that Nokia was identified as Finnish or Sony as Japanese or, or Lego as, as, as uh, Dan Danish. And, uh, and uh, Israel built its economy 
mostly it's an export economy. It's, it's, you know, it's a small country. It's all dependent upon foreign investment and foreign trade. But almost the entire Israeli export industry is built upon business to business or business to government. So in my, in my iPhone over here, there might be hundreds of hours or more, thousands of hours and, and years of work of Israeli scientists and engineers, but it says Apple. And, and that's why uh, it's very difficult to create a serious boycott of Israeli products or of Israeli industries. Uh, and these kosher groceries in Florida, you know, their, their audience, their customers, are not going to listen to, the st uh, to uh, Students for Justice in Palestine. You know, if you went to the Israeli grocery in Aventura in Florida, uh, it's like coming back to the grocery of my childhood in the 70s in Israel because it's only Israeli products. <laughs> but the customers there are people who came from Israel. And, and I don't think, I think that, that the right answer to that is, uh, you know, if, if you have good arguments against BDS, make them. And in the end of the day, there were a few musicians who, who didn't play in Israel this year. I think the most prominent was Lana Del Rey, who canceled her, her concert at the last moment. But uh, most of the others uh, played Israel. Uh, only a couple nights ago, we had, uh, we had Martha Agrich, which is the most prominent concert pianist in the world, playing five or six concerts in Israel with no interruption. And, and I think that, that this effort appears to me a little bit overblown. It's a matter of, of political debate. We should listen to these people. We can have very good answers to what they say. And, and uh, trying to, to, to uh, use, uh, as we say in Israel, to use a hammer to kill a fly, it's, it's overblown. And in the end of the day, what, what I was trying to show with the Eurovision, uh, with the Eurovision letter signed by Netanyahu, and by, and by Israel's dealings with many of the Arab regimes. I don't believe that any, I, I, I agree with you, Draw, that I don't think that President Assisi or the King of Jordan or the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and all these leaders who have uh, uh, more on the record and, and, and more off, or either off the record ties with Israel are Zionists or, are, or became Zionists after they met uh, Israeli leaders. But they learned how to live with Israel, and they see it as their interest. And, and that's the kind of interest that we should promote, rather than, rather than calling them names and saying that until they accept so Zionism... So let's wait until the Palestinian will have some brain in their head. Let's wait, I don't know, 100 years later. And on that who, is, who in rush? Who in rush? We are so ancient people, 3,000 years old, more. So why are, why okay. are we pushing? Oh, okay. we have a windows of opportunities. Dr. Dolly, that, thank oh, you. Let's wait. I want to thank all of you. And believe. This was so interesting. I see that there are a few people wanting to ask questions, but I'm sorry, we don't have the time for it. You can catch us later. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Have a good thank evening. You. Can, I, can I just uh, mention that now we are closing this